Okay, we want to welcome everybody to our July 20th, uh, 2022 Local Development Council meeting by way of Zoom. And uh, we want to thank everybody for joining us uh, this evening. What we want to do is we want to go ahead and start out with our normal process of uh, reporting from our, our five uh, different uh, divisions. Uh, the first is the Grand Selection Committee, of course, Kimberly Hall and a few other people run that. And, and just an update to where we are and what we're doing and how we're doing that. Then we'll hear from the Oversight Committee. Uh, once we hear from the Oversight Committee, we'll hear from uh, Kevin and Public Relations. Uh, from there, we will go to, uh, to uh, um, well, the legislative branch and, and talk to the Oversight Committee as well. So we can go ahead and start with, uh, with you, Kimberly, if you don't mind. <clears throat> sure. Um, so good evening, everyone. Um, so the last time we met, um, we provided a pretty detailed um, kind of report, if you will, of <clears throat> where we landed um, with the um, 48 applicants that 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 we received um, a funding request from. And so since then, I provided the information kind of in writing, the follow-up administratively to Ryan and Kanika and team. And they have um, spoken with or communicated with per the normal process, um, each of the grantees that um, we recommended funding to. One update, um, there was one funding, um, there was one, actually, if you give me a second. Catholic church, well, now Catholic churches, I can't remember. Yeah, it was St. I think it was St. John's, but I St. wanted John. to. Yeah, St. John's. To get it right. They, um, we were notified that they, and I apologize for not having this up handy. Do you want to come back to me, Pastor Robinson, and then I'll have it all ready to yeah, go? Uh, okay, yeah. Is that can, cool? Okay. Um, uh, Dr. Lattimore on the Oversight Committee. Um, good evening, everyone. I don't have any updates. Um, I'll have to wait and see what Kimberly comes up with, but I don't have any updates. Um, Takesha, do you have any? No, oh, ma'am. All right. Okay, well, we'll move right on to Ms. Jackson and uh, the Public Relations Committee. Um, no, no updates from our committee. Okay, and uh, that brings us to our legislative branch. Uh, uh, Senator Patterson and uh, uh, Delegate Turner. Um, I don't know if uh, Delegate Valorama will have a representative here tonight or not, but uh, if either of you have anything, uh, then we'll get back to Kimberly and move forward from that. Uh, okay, I missed the first part of your, your statement. Did you ask something of me? Yeah, just turning it over to you and uh, Delegate Turner, if you have um, anything uh, to report from the legislative branch. I guess the biggest thing I can tell you is that we're tired, tired, and tired. <laughs> uh, everyone knows that yesterday was election day, and I, I really found it a little hard to even get on this call because I haven't had much sleep in the last couple of nights. But um, all I can tell you is that. Um, we, 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 we got through election, uh, votes are still being counted. That's political, I don't know if that's legislative or not, but I, I think it is. Our votes are being counted and we'll be uh, starting tomorrow on the um, mail-in ballot. Uh, so we all in sort of a wait and see category. I, I don't know anything about what's going on in Annapolis. I think everybody just been sort of focused uh, on this election. So maybe things will start uh, picking up in terms of subcommittee meetings and looking at um, legislation that we sponsored last year. I don't think we'll be overriding any of the legislation prior to opening of the 2023 uh, legislative services. But um, one of my big bills, I'll just tell you, I'm a little uptight about it. The only bill I got vetoed was the one <laughs> The governor vetoed this past session. Um, I can't remember the, the last name of it, but it was a bill dealing with the uh, return citizens and helping to develop job skills for those uh, in the communities that did not want to go. I could not go on to college, but uh, he saw fit to veto it. So 
hopefully um, we can find somebody to pick it up again next year. As most of you know, I am not uh, a candidate. So my official uh, ending date will be January of 2023. So that's about as much as I can share with you, uh, Mr. Chair, at this point. I don't know if my colleague, um, Delegate Turner, is on or not. She yeah, she's, she's on. Delegate? Yes. Okay, everybody, as, as the Senator Patterson was saying, I have, I'm just getting my voice back uh, um, of uh, campaigning uh, so hard of, uh, and it was so hot. It was so hot. And, and, and in the early voting for those, e, e, um, those eight days, it was just as bad. But, uh, the, you know, but like I say, it is, it's, it's almost over. Uh, tomorrow, as the Senator said, uh, we will be uh, counting some uh, last minute uh, balance. Uh, the, the races that are very, very close um, we are we are keeping our eye on some of the races that's that's very close, and as for myself, uh, I won my seat back. Uh, thank you, Veronica, for working so hard, and thank you, Senator Patterson, for helping me get that way. Uh, but um, I need some a vacation, uh, Pastor Robinson. I have not had a vacation. Is it okay with you if I take one after tomorrow? Yes, ma'am. What we're going to do is we're going we're to officially eliminate our meeting for, for August. And, uh, and uh, we, we may very well have a special meeting. Of course, you know, we, we recess in August anyway. But uh, with Mr. Burroughs on tonight, uh, we may very well possibly have a special meeting. But uh, yes, ma'am, we will uh, give you the room to, uh, to have a vacation. Thank you so much. Y'all don't know how much I appreciate, believe me. Um, there's a lot of loose ends that we have to do, um, especially now for, as for some of us, uh, tomorrow might be the last day for us to do anything until January um, because of the way the election uh, going for the, the Democrats and the Republicans in this race. But I just want y'all to know it's, I am ready. Y'all gonna have y'all a little vacation. And when you come back, uh, Pastor Robinson, yes, could y'all make sure that you have it together what you want me to do while I'm up in Annapolis so mm -hmm. I can continue the trim about what we're doing for um, the LDC uh, and the grants. Um, um, I'm, 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 I'm willing to step up at the plate and bring back uh, all the information that y'all need me to bring back. And, and so I just can't wait until January when we really get started again, when we get started again after August. So we come back in September, right? The first yes, Wednesday in September, yes, right? Mm -hmm. First Wednesday in, 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 in September. So I'm gonna be ready by that time and maybe I can have any bills or anything that y'all would like me to look into or anything that you need me to put in to help the continue what the work that we've been doing on this LDC. And again, I want to thank everybody. I, I just know all you wonderful people did the right thing yesterday. Yes, well, we, we, uh, we uh, want to thank some of the past. It's a little early, but uh, we know the composition of the LDC will change by at least one. And uh, want to say um, very clearly, Senator Patterson, we have enjoyed this relationship, sir, with you and uh, deeply appreciate all that you have put in, particularly with the whole harmless and those kind of things you and, and uh, 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 Delegate Turner. So we're excited about that and want to thank you for all that you do and know that we'll be able to call upon you at any time, even though you're gone. We'll be able to call upon you for those people you know down in Annapolis who you can maybe twist an arm or something like that to get us to where we need to go as a local development council. Uh, Mr. Mr. Owens, we record all of these meetings. Uh, you can download it offline. So all the writing that you're doing, 
is not necessary necessary but uh if you if you if you we, we do record these so that you can get them offline and get it word for word okay so with that in mind kimberly we'll come back to you yep um so so good evening again um so there were just some numbers and whatnot i wanted to be able to tell you guys you all specifically. So um, thanks for bearing with me. So we were notified that the Fort Washington Food Pantry of St. John's uh, Church had to decline the $10,000 uh, grant award that we had um, that we had awarded them because they weren't able to get a vendor in the county. Um, uh, and so there, you know, there's certain stipulations and guidelines that that have to be followed. So as a result of that, what the what the grant selection um, committee did was um, have those that ten thousand dollars funds reallocated to the Solid Foundation. So the Solid Foundation is. Um, uh, a nonprofit that provides education and, and support and shelter even to um, human trafficking victims in the um, in the county and then certainly those impacted in the um, in the appropriate six mile radius of the MGM. So their their ask was 50. Um, but with 10 being what we had available, that's what we offered to them. And they have even, um, they were extremely excited for the award, um, especially having um, not received one before from us. And they're going to resubmit just so that we're clear. And um, Dr. Lattimore and Takesha, this will be helpful for you all too. They're going to kind of resubmit their budget to show how they're going to leverage the 10K since it's not the original 50K. Um, so, so when we get that, I'll be sure to send that over. So with that, we um, would have awarded or will have awarded 40 applicants out of the 48 that requested um, grants. And we had a total of uh, probably the highest that we've ever had in 69 requests for funding that amounted to over two, right at $2 million, $1.9 million, somewhere right around there. So we excited about the participation and uh, folks getting to know about this money. So we, we're excited about that. Kevin, did I, did I give you a, an opportunity to report? Nib, I figured you was going to come back to me um, eventually. Um, so, but I uh, appreciate it. Uh, but just like everyone else, nothing major to report. Um, it has been a super busy um, couple of months uh, for everyone. Uh, so we uh, uh, get on the uh, Senator Patterson's uh, schedule along uh, with the rest of the team uh, sometime um, in late August, early September. We get those uh, these assessments, questions um, drafted up uh, for the team to look over and at the September meeting. And then we'd be ready to submit um, out to the community sometime in October. OK, I'll, of course, I'll report back to the county exec is due on the 14th. So that'll follow in the next uh cycle of things along with anything else that we come uh, to discover. So we will keep that in mind. Ms. Brown, I just want to acknowledge you. Thanks for hanging out with us this evening. Thank you. Greetings and salutations to everyone. Yes, <laughs> OK, we want to move on. As you know, I, um, uh, the reporting process, uh, the county exec sends us <clears throat> information on monies with the local development council and how those monies are to be distributed based upon her recommendations, which normally as a result of our layering from one year to the next, these are recommendations that we make to her, she sends back to us in terms of, well, before saying to us, uh, they go to the county council. From the county council, they come to us, we have 45 days to respond back to uh, the, uh, the, the, the county exec. Now, I, this observation comes from over a couple of years. I've only been on the, the local development council for close to three years now. And one of the things that I've seen and I want you to understand is, is that I think in the minds of most people, <clears throat> the LDC has been relegated to the idea of awarding grants. But if you, if you pay attention to uh, the, the county charter, the state charter, our responsibility is well beyond awarding grants. We are constituents. We uh, residents uh, of the community, we are businesses in the community, and we have a lot of say so about how this money gets spent. We are not only constituents to Council Member Burroughs, we are also constituents to the county exec. We are constituents to both at large seats in, in, in Councilman Hawkins and uh, Councilman Franklin. 
we are constituents to these four entities. And it's very, very important that we understand that. And that, uh, as I said, uh, there have been several attempts to um, marginalize or, or just kind of move out of the way the role of the local development council. And we've had to kind of push back at that a couple of times. It's very, very important that folks uh, get to understand the role that we actually play. You can find that on, uh, on the state site, you can find it on the county site. And it's important for folks to visit that to understand the role that we play. And very important to understand that we are constituents, stakeholders, and important that uh, folks understand the role that we play in making recommendations back to the county exec. Now we serve at the pleasure by law of the county exec, but do we do not serve at uh, her whim and fancy? Our role is very, a very important role. We do not serve at the women fancy of our council persons. We are representing the community. Our role is to represent the community. Uh, we have a needs assessment uh, <clears throat> department in place. We have a uh, oversight committee in place. And these, these committees are very, very important. Public relations is important. And I just want to put that on the record that we have a role that's well beyond what's in the minds of most people in the idea that all we do is award grants. Our role is much more important to that. Please visit the Local Development uh, Council site and you can understand and do some research on the idea that our role as constituents is of extreme importance. Now in this uh, particular cycle, Councilman Burroughs is just coming on uh, the Local Development Council recommendations come from the county exec uh, to the county council. Uh, Councilman Burroughs has uh, made significant changes to <clears throat> what has been recommended. And uh, of course, I sent an a, a email out to you guys to uh, take a look at it, study it, understand it, and, and uh, be prepared to talk about this as it relates to what our role is and what he's recommending. Now, with that in mind, I, I uh, put that email out. I got a telephone call from Councilman Burroughs to, uh, to say to me that uh, he was getting calls from a number of people referenced my email and uh, wanted to know why I didn't call him first. My response to him is, you know, the, ma the major changes that you made uh, were so significant and I thought that you should have called us first uh, to at least talk and con talk about this thing before it went as far as it ha has gone. He, we, were, we were in a, a conversation that was interrupted uh, numerous times because he was out politicking at that particular point. He was, he was uh, talking to a bunch of people who were kind of interrupting our, our meetings, so we didn't get a chance to to really talk, uh, reached out and said that I would be available after eight that evening. Of course, we didn't get a chance after that to talk and haven't had a chance to talk since then. So I'm invited, I invited him into this meeting. As you know, the changes, uh, for those of you who have read it, the changes are extremely significant. And I don't know how many of you have had the opportunity and I like to um, um, kind of feel who has had the opportunity to read the, the changes up against the Toya. Rashida, Kimberly, anybody else besides myself? Uh, uh, Senator Patterson, Takesha, have you had an opportunity to read? Okay, Kevin. Okay, so that, that that's least uh, that's seven out of. Uh, 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 Miss Turner, have you had an opportunity? I just glanced. I just glanced through it. I have. I want to absorb it a little bit more because I need to be clear about these changes, okay? I am one of the originals who has been on this LDC, okay? So I want to make sure that, you know, I am reading this right and having a clear understanding and want to hear reasoning and the rationale of the changes. Okay. Pastor well, Robinson. What, what we have, uh, you know, the, the again, the role of the Local Development Council, as Mr. Burrow said to me, he didn't have a lot of time to uh, put all this together. I think they went to recess, well, on Monday, Mr. Burroughs, I mean, Councilman Burroughs, they went to recess on, on Monday and he only had the weekend to kind of put this together. Well, you know, that impacts us in a, in, in a, in a huge way in trying to understand the changes that he's made. Now, we are not at quorum tonight with the fact that 
uh, 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 Delegate Turner has not had an opportunity to look at this. Uh, Kevin saw it briefly. So we, we're not a quorum to be able to vote and talk about it. And I wanted to give Councilman Burroughs the opportunity to explain uh, to us what his intentions are. Uh, I think he's, he mentioned to me in our, in, in our brief meeting, we were back and forth with the interruptions, but this was a starting point. Uh, and we are uh, we are we are we need to to really kind of understand where he is. So uh, I understand the quorum, Ryan, but uh, Delegate Turner has not had the opportunity to take a look at things. So uh, with that in mind, what I wanted to do is have a special meeting where we could have Council Member Burroughs <clears throat> explain to us what he's trying to do. I said to him on the phone uh, and made it very clear my role is to uh, see you do well. But as a council, we have to work together on this thing and uh, kind of conclude where the money goes, how it goes, and those kind of things. Now, if you had a chance to look at it, and I wish you would take the opportunity to look at it, there were a number of things that have been wiped out of the, out of the, uh, the recommendations altogether, specifically one, two, three, four, five, six schools, and of course, the uh, workforce development and scholarships to, uh, to uh, a number of, of uh, uh, the scholarship program to students. And of course, those are major changes. Uh, uh, we'll just take the uh, workforce development for instance. Um, we, we, we awarded that money back in, I believe it was 18, uh, somewhere in, I think there were three months, uh, the end of 18, there were three months before uh, COVID hit. And there was a lot going on in that particular time frame. Punch out, we dumped the or, or workforce through the award dumped a lot of money into that particular project at Tangier. Um, I must have visited that site in, in my own personal oversight, visited that site about 15 times, trying to understand how the money is flowing and, and I believe in tracking the money, how it's flowing and those kind of things. So I was over there quite a bit punch out, change orders, deep high delays. There were a whole lot of stuff going on with that. But we finally opened up last year with a lot of fanfare. We had the um, Lieutenant Governor, we had the Secretary of Labor, we had our, our, our uh, County Exec, we had all of our dignitaries in, in Veronica Turner, I mean, Delegate Turner, uh, Senator Patterson, we had Senator Bowser Brownman. Microphone working? Yeah, say that again. Okay, I wasn't sure if my microphone was working. I was playing with my settings. Okay, so we had we had uh, Sen Senator. If I can speak, Pastor Robinson, just let me know. Let me, let me okay, let me finish. I'll acknowledge you in a second, sir. We had, we had uh, Senator uh, Bowser Rahman, a number of people. So that was. And there, uh, um, our, our uh, council member at that time. Councilmember Walker was not present. They were, of course, in the throes of dealing with the whole idea of the redistricting. As most of you know, I chaired the redistricting commission. Uh, so they were in a, in, a, in a kind of back and forth with that. So her representative was uh, Gina Ford, um, spoke at this event uh, and uh, a lot of fanfare with, with the opening of that. And at this particular point, uh, things are running smooth, and, and of course we uh, we got the uh, letter from from Chairman Hawkins about the changes that uh, Councilman Burroughs have made. Uh, Councilman Burroughs, come on, and we'll, we we can get into it from here. But we <clears throat> need to have some at least, depending on how you uh, how you respond to us this evening. We we need to have probably a special meeting to really get into the detail. Great, uh, thank you. Uh, and thank you so much for uh, having me here and thank you for the invitation and congratulations to Delegate Turner and to Delegate-elect Harris on, on their victories and um, similar to uh, Delegate Turner's comments, I appreciate all the support that I receive from uh, people on this call and, and people throughout District 8. Um, I, I do want to change the tone and tenor of the conversation significantly. Um, you know, it, we are all working together, not for any one person, but on behalf of what's in the best interest of the people that we represent. You know, how do we leverage every single thing that we do 
to help the people who live in our districts. And that's really what this conversation should be about. Not the this, you know, this, you know, who respects who or this, this, and that, you know, it, it does not serve our, our, our constituents well. And so how do we work together collectively as a team to put forth the best plan possible to uplift as many people as possible? Uh, and that, that is why I'm here tonight. Uh, the process was described earlier. Um, I do have some comments on that. So this was sent down by the county executive for the council to vote on, I believe on a, on a Thursday. Um, we had a very short time to provide comments. It was a Thursday before the 4th of July. So 4th of July was on a Monday. I had to submit a plan in by that Tuesday. Uh, and this plan that I've submitted is simply a first step. You know, people call it, oh, you changed things. I haven't changed anything. I've changed absolutely nothing. This first step in the process is for me to submit a plan, well, the county council to submit a plan to you, the county executive to submit a plan to you so that you can provide feedback and comment. And so the notion that I have eliminated anything is simply untrue. Uh, the notion that I have significantly changed anything is significantly untrue. Um, all that I have done was provide more things for the LDC to consider over this 45 day period. The council has taken no official action on any, any of this. And so this document is for us to work together and to think about over the, these next 45 days. Um, I had some observations that I wanted to run by you. Um, and I'll go through this in greater detail during a special meeting, uh, but you know, Pastor Robinson mentioned that I've impacted six schools and I, in, in my thoughts, because this is what this is that I've submitted to you, um, I saw that Oxon Hill Middle School window replacement was 2.6 million, uh, Apple Grove cor Correction Fire Alarm 200,000, John Hanson Painting 300,000. As I'm looking at these things, I think to myself, what do our young people need like right now? I mean, we are recovering from the pandemic and I'm happy to bring during the special meeting, our scores, our literacy scores and our numeracy scores. How are our students reading? How are they doing in math? How are they social, emotionally? Uh, and, and I can bring to you some of the statistics from the state's attorney's office, Department of Juvenile Services. So how do we make the biggest dent in their lives? And so, yes, I want the windows fixed. I believe the school system should fund a lot of these capital improvements out of the school system's operating budget. But what I think would move the needle best and most for our students are some of these mentoring, wraparound services, and workforce development services. I believe that those things are more um, life-changing, more important. And as we look at the amount of suspensions and expulsions, and mental health crisis that our students are going through post pandemic, how do we use this resource of money to, to work on those issues? Um, I mentioned earlier about the literacy scores and I'm gonna bring them for our district. Uh, and there's so, so much evidence regarding literacy scores and a student's entire trajectory in life and graduation and all of those things. Our students are, are suffering and one of, the definitions of education, or one of the uh, eligibility groups for education under uh, CB33 is the library system. And they have a robust tutoring program. And so I put in here, you know, how do we find our lowest performing um, elementary schools and have the library system come in and work with our students after school on the weekends and throughout the summertime? Um, I also know that we have a lot of young people who want not just young people, but all people in our district who want certifications and apprenticeship training. Uh, and, and we have a lot of people who graduate from our school system, unfortunately, go to the community college and stuck in remedial courses. Like, how could we, you know, could we, and I called over to the community college and I've been meeting with and talking with the chair of their community college board who lives in Fort Washington. Could we have free tuition for anyone who lives in District 8? for certifications and developmental courses and apprenticeship training. You know, you know what would that look like? You know, I think that's, so uh, I can keep going. 
Um, and then also the financial empowerment center. So, so this is kind of where, where my head is. This is where my heart is. I'm not trying to cut anything or hurt anybody or do anything. You know, it is not a me versus anyone on this call. It's how do we work together? And when I looked at some of the things that were proposed, like the window replacement and the fire alarm, I'm like, if we replace these windows, is and we should, and the school system should. The school system takes up over 60% of the county's budget. You know, if if we do that, as we should, could we do it through the capital budget? But how do we maximize these resources to make the biggest difference in the lives of our of our district eight residents? Um, and then I also um, put something in here for the housing authority self sufficiency program. So uh, during the pandemic, we had so many of our folks who are uh, on government assistance and in these apartment buildings, especially in Glass Manor, even in Brinkley Road, those apartments, people who are who are so far behind on their rent um, and they're up for evictions, and I met with and attended the housing self-sufficiency program. And what they do is they work with them and they give them job training and skills um, and they find them a quality job and they pull them off of government assistance and they help them buy their first home. Now, those are things that I think are, are life-changing and, and, and can be very helpful to a lot of people. And when I look at our district, you know, we have a very diverse district. You know, we have the well-to-do folks down in Tantalet and Port Washington, but we, we also have the folks in Glass Manor who, who are struggling. And so, you know, how do we put things in for everybody, you know, to uplift the district? I also put some stuff in here for Forest Heights. One of the big issues that I hear um, as I've knocked thousands of doors, I'm very thankful to be over 72% right now, um, is the amount of litter and trash that are on the roads. Um, and, you know, we pay some of the highest taxes in the southern part of the county, and it's important that we have an aesthetic that reflects the dignity of the people who live there. And so what would it look like if we had a partnership with the Forest Heights Public Works Department, where they go out and, and not take away from what the county's doing, but in addition to pick up the litter, cut the grass. And so I've been in meetings with the Forest Heights government and the State Highway Administration about having Forest Heights take over 210 because you're going to attend, you see grass up to here, see litter debris everywhere. It's one of the, the major concerns that I hear. So, you know, is there a partnership that could take place with that? Um, and so I can go on and on and on, but I, I can assure you, I don't wanna cut any scholarships. Um, I, I don't wanna take away any employee Prince George's thing where we're putting people to work at all. I mean, I, I literally had four days to submit a, um, a conversation starter. And even when we pass this on the floor, uh, and I hope, I wanna encourage you to go back and look at that video. When we pass this on the floor, I said, this is nothing more than a starting point. This is nothing more than a conversation starter. And I'm gonna be working between now and the 45 day time period uh, with all of the stakeholders to come up with a consensus proposal that uplifts the district. And so that's, that, that's where I stand on this. I look forward to working with every single one of you. Um, you know, perhaps there could be a small work group with, you know, a few members of the LDC, a few members, um, you know, you know, uh, of the, you know, council or whatever makes sense. But, um, you know, so the, the, that, that, that's where, where I am on this and I'm open for any questions. Well, let me let me comment before before the questions, but uh, you have to understand how this looked when it came to us. Right. I mean, it uh, we had not heard from you. It just simply came to us with an attachment showing changes that uh, you were recommending. Um, one was the uh, National Harbor, original plan, Burroughs Plan Zero. I mean, and this is what we saw. Having not talked to you, this is what we saw. You're saying that this is a starting point now, but this is what we saw. Uh, excellence in education, 200,000, Burroughs Plan, Zero. This is the attachment and what it says. But, but Pastor last... Robinson, if, if you watched the meeting or if you called, I would have been very clear, as I did in the meeting when we voted on this, that this was a starting point. Even before I submitted this, I met with the county executive's office and I said, this is just a starting point. And so th th there is no need 
to have an adversary, adversarial back and forth. I'm, this, I'm more this, interested in moving forward about how to work is, together. This is not adversarial by any means. You said you talked to the county exec's office, but you didn't talk to the local development council. So we're in this position that when we receive this, this is what we are looking at. If there's no explanation to it or anything else. This is not about being adversarial. Uh, Councilman Burroughs, I told you point blank, I want to see you succeed. So this is not about adversarial or anything else. But I'm trying to get you to understand what we were confronted with when we saw the, uh, the uh, Councilman Hawkins, uh, Chair Hawkins letter uh, with these attachments and these eliminations. And that's what, that's what we saw and the telephone calls that I got. Um, I couldn't answer the question. Did he talk to you? Has he said anything to us? I couldn't answer any of those questions. Uh, of course, I heard from you after you started getting uh, responses to my email uh, that why didn't I talk to you? And my response to you was why didn't you talk to us? It's not about being adversarial. I want to clear this stuff up and, and move forward and see you succeed as our council member, sir, likely for the next eight years. I told you that. I made that very clear to you. And uh, that's the way we're going to look at this. Now, this is just a starting point. You just recommended the idea of uh, having some meetings uh, with uh, people from your office. I would strongly suggest uh, instead of doing that, you have, uh, if, if, uh, if, the, if I'm reading a law right, you have the response, you have the opportunity to either show to these meetings yourself or send a representative. At that point, we can take your, your representative and add to our needs assessment committee, and they can kind of hash this kind of stuff out of what we need to see, and they come back to us with recommend, recommendations on what we need to see. That's what's in place in the local development council. We have a, have a needs assessment committee that does just that. Now, when we talk about, for instance, uh, Forest Heights is a township. Um, if you read uh, SB 35 law, it states that Forest Heights is specifically to get money for three years, 18, 19, and 20. Uh, I think it was 112,500 for 18, 2% increase for 19, and a 3% increase for 20. And it stops there. You are recommending giving them eight, I mean, nine hundred thousand dollars. Well, that opposes uh, SB thirty five. And it, so these are the things. I don't think that so. Uh, I mean, we, we can go back and forth like this, or we can kind of work in a more constructive way. And which is why I suggested having a work group to to go through these details. Well, what I'm suggesting to you is appoint somebody from your office to the LDC. And we will appoint them to the the assessment committee, and we can we can get into the things that you're talking about is what I'm recommending. So you know, with with that in mind, but but I do want to hear from you, Councilman Burroughs. We we as I said, we want to make this thing work for us, not just for anybody in particular, but for the entire Council Eight District. However, with our our limitations expand to only six miles and, and services have to be done inside of that six mile radius of which we just expanded from three uh, to six miles just recently. So, so with that in mind, uh, I would strongly suggest that you, you uh, appoint someone from your staff or even yourself, Mr. Burroughs, I, you know, I, you know um, to join in with our assessment uh, committee so that we can determine the kinds of things that we need. These needs that we have listed uh, 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 come from last year to the to the county exec, which is coming back from her to you and then to us. <clears throat> the only change that I would make in what we've seen to this point is Potomac Landing. Potomac Landing, uh, I've talked to the principal about their move out date going to the new school. Uh, it wouldn't make sense. I think they got something like $65,000, $80,000 to do painting. It wouldn't make sense to take that money to paint and they're gonna be out of there before the painters get there. Uh, so those, that's the only recommendation I would, I would make to the current um, proposed plan uh, outside of what you recommended. And, uh, and I would strongly suggest that you please get involved with us uh, to the point that you have a representative from your office or from yourself uh, to, to really get ingrained in this process um, while, while you're saying that the, the uh, 
jobs uh, center is, is I think I hear you saying it's, it's not set in concrete. Is that what you're saying? Can you, job can you, center. Can you rephrase your question? Uh, I, didn't, I didn't understand your question. The, uh, the job center, uh, the American job center at Tangier. Mm -hmm. um, your, your attachment says no money to them. And, and I think I hear you saying that's not set in concrete. Is that what you're saying? I'm letting you know that nothing that I submitted is set in concrete, not one part. Uh, nope. It is simply a conversation starter so that we could engage in a meaningful dialogue to figure out what's in the best interest of the district and how to work together to approve a plan that helps as many people as possible. So mm -hmm. no part of what I submitted is set in stone. I had four days to provide uh, a list of, 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 of thinking around this topic with the understanding that both my letter, the council's letter and the county executive's letter will go to the LDC. And at the time that we voted to approve this, I said on the floor, felt like more than 10 times, that I would be working with all the stakeholders over the recess period to come up with a consensus proposal. Okay. And so to answer your question, yeah. none so, of it is set in stone, not a, not a single part of it. Okay, Senator Patterson. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, thank you, Councilman, for being here this afternoon. I just got some 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 general questions. First of all, we 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 certainly need to fully understand that the operation of the local development council is uh, was established under law. So there is a law, and 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 I would uh, say, Mr. Chairman, we certainly want to make sure that. Uh, any recommendation or any action we take that we do it yeah, in full compliance of the law. And I would hope that if this committee does not have access to a county attorney to work with us on legal things, if we need be that, um, is it Michael or Brian take this back to the county exactly and indicate at some point we may, and maybe that we don't need to cross this bridge now, but for us, in our later discussion, we need to look at uh, things such as just to make sure that we are in full compliance. Uh, Ms. Uh, Council Member, it looked like to me the projects that you are putting on this council ought to be handled by the county council. I mean, I mean, I, you talk about housing projects. These are we don't get fifty million dollars here. We 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 only get a small amount of money to operate in the community, local small projects. And, and, and school, board, yes, I fully understand that there are many behavior problems in the school system, but the school system get money specifically to take care of these things. So uh, maybe we need to make sure those that are getting money for specific function are doing what the law intended for them to do. And would not need to come and perhaps siphon off uh, some of the money that uh, the local uh, development council held uh, to operate. Um, capital projects, uh, I, I share a bit of your concern about uh, uh, circumventing uh, the, the local development council fund for capital projects. Uh, when there are monies that come directly to the county from the state, uh, uh, for specific uh, capital projects. Uh, school boards get a lot of money over there and maybe uh, we need to look at some of their, their projects to see if some of those could be put on the front burner to help with uh, some of the things that you mentioned. And the last thing I would say, um, who are the stakeholders you're talking about? Are you talking about everybody in the county that you want to meet with to discuss this project? Or are you talking about those who are in the heavily local impact area? Are you talking about the local development council where you say you want to meet with the local, uh, I think you said the stakeholders relative to this project? Is that the entire county council members? Or is that the county, the whole county? Who, who are they? <laughs> Well, thank you for the question. So I think the stakeholders would, of course, be the LDC. Uh, it would be the other council members that have partial overlap with this fund. Uh, it would also be some of the, uh, the, the neighborhoods and neighborhood leaders who, who live in it. I mean, it would be the constituents who, who live in the district. 
Uh, and so, you know, I'm, I'm in favor of a very robust and, and collective engagement process as it relates to, to these funds. All right. Well, that was my uh, direct question to you. But, uh, I, Mr. Chair, I, I, I'm, I'm hopeful that we are not going to require any specific action tonight because, and it's not mm -hmm. that I have not really had a time to really uh, uh, read uh, the two pieces of the correspondence and, and toward the um, And I'd like to have that opportunity. In answer to that, uh... Senator Patterson, we will probably end up having a special meeting. Of, of course, we, of course, recess uh, after this meeting for August, but we need to have a special. <coughs> we will have to respond uh, to this and vote on uh, what our recommendations would be uh, to the county council. I, I mean, not to the county council, but to the county exec. I think we have about 35, 36, 37 days to do that. And, uh, and then we'll go from there. Uh, One last Dr. question for Mr. Burrow. Mr. Burrow, uh, Councilman uh, Burrow, did you develop your plan and then it was submitted to the county executive and the county executive reviewed it or, and sent it to what, what to the back to the county council to vote on it or did it go lead the county council and come directly to uh, the local development council? I'm trying to figure out how does thing travel once it got developed? So it, uh, the county executive's plan came to the county council. Right, I know that, okay. Uh, and then um, the county council is re requested to provide comment. Right. Uh, and so, you know, the list that you see before you is the council's comment. Both those comments come, all of those comments come to LDC. And the LDC has, your, you know, the 45 days to make whatever recommendations that you have. So your comments that you developed, were they reviewed by the county executive before they got to us? Were they reviewed by the county executive? Are um, you incorporating your comments into the comments from the, from the county council? I'm not sure I, that I'm understanding your question, I but- I am trying to figure out where did you develop your plan of action or request or modification? Uh, with the council at the, at the council level, and you know the office of budget management was phenomenal to okay. to, to okay. kind of liaison with, but um, they understood, as I understand, that this was the beginning of the process, not the end of the process. Okay. So just like their plans coming to the LDC, the plan of the council approved is coming to the LDC, right. um, and we've agreed to work together between now and recess. As you know, the council's in recess until September. Right. Um, but there won't be a recess for, for the district aid office. Um, and we will be working um, the entire month of recess um, on, on this issue. I look forward to working with each and every one of you as well. Thank you, Mr. Chair. All right, Dr. Dr. Lattimore. Yes, thank you, Pastor Robinson. Um, hello, Councilman Burroughs. I'm Dr. Lattimore, and um, I think you know that I live in your district, and I'm directly impacted um, by you know some of your starting points, and I'm glad to hear that they're starting points. Um, I just want to um, give you some examples of how Employee Prince George's has definitely impacted our area, we um, in Founders Woods, um, I attend a lot of your meetings, your monthly meetings, and um, we have a lot of young adults that have gotten off track that um, I kind of mentor and Employee Prince George's has been phenomenal in getting them jobs, um, helping them with assistance with DHS, um, Health and Human Services for SNAP benefits, um, Section 8 housing, things of that nature. And um, they're, they are like a one-stop shop. To have something like that in our area, first and foremost, is amazing. So I just want to ensure that when um, whatever collaboration you guys come up with, um, I will definitely raise my hand to be part of that team or that group but I am one of your constitu constituents and I can walk to the harbor from my house. And um, 
we don't have much in Fort Washington. I know everybody says we have the National Harbor, but to be honest, half the people can't afford to eat at the National Harbor um, due to their pricing and things of that nature. Um, we do have um, a lot of homeless in Fort Washington. I'm gonna give you an example. There was a lady that's been out there for I say the last six to eight months in a cart um, with a blue um, tent. And, you know, I kind of got tired of seeing her out there. So I stopped one day and um, just asked her if she needed something to eat or did she want me to call somebody? And she said that was her home. It was Oxen Hill Road. And of course it was in front of the MGM. So they did not want that type of a portrait in front of there. So I went over to um, employ Prince George's and someone over there gave me some numbers and I made contact with them. And a Prince George's County police officer met me out there one day in the rain with that lady. And we got her some help. Um, and, you know, we got her to Southern Maryland Hospital and to the mental ward, but it's all about giving back to your community and employ Prince George's is one of those um, organizations um, that feeds the community is, you know, the hearts and minds of the community. Um, people don't have far to go. They don't have to sit on the line and wait for SNAP benefits and stuff like that. So I just wanted to um, ask if when um, you all do these starting points that you don't forget about, you know, socializing it with the people who live in the neighborhood, um, because I think it's a, a great place. I think the county put a lot of money into it. I really don't think a lot of people still don't know it's there, to be honest with you. But if you know, um, they have people in there that would help you. And I would just ask that um, you keep that in mind. And I appreciate um, you taking the time to come and, and listen and speak to us. And one last point, we have the oversight committee for the grants this year. And Ryan allowed me and Takesha to stay another year last year. Um, that has been one of the greatest um, things that I've done so far in the county is to, to land on this um, LCD council to oversee the grants, to monitor the money, Takesha and I. And Kimberly, we um, do a great job and Rashida. So um, trust and believe, um, Pastor thinks that Keisha and I are very hard when it comes to looking at that money, but we ensure that the homeowners and the county residents money is put to good use. So again, I wanna thank you for listening and just keep us in mind um, in District 8. Absolutely, and thank you so much for what you did for that woman that you found. Um, I know that it wasn't something that you had to do, but you chose to do it and I hope she's doing well now. Uh, I look forward to working with you. I hear you loud and clear. My little brother was helped by employee Prince George's. And so I have no intentions of uh, harming anything that is great that is happening in our district, including uh, employee Prince George's. Okay. Um, one of the, one of the, some of the specifics, Councilman Burroughs, that we have to concern ourselves with is the monies that are appointed have to be specific. They have to be purposed. They have to be accounted for. There's a lot of things that have to go into. That's the part of the, the oversight uh, committee's responsibility to make sure that the money is being spent properly. And when I first took over in February of last year, um, we, we had a hard time getting off the ground. It took us about seven, eight months to get off the ground. We lost five of our, our members, the chair, the vice chair, the, the, uh, uh, the selection committee chair and a few others all at the same time and then lost our uh, the heartbeat of this whole thing, our administrator to the point that we floundered for about the first eight months. So we're now at that place where we're, 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 we're starting to thrive. And one of the things that the oversight committee has a responsibility for is to make certain that these monies are being spent specifically for what they uh, are designated for in accounting a, a mid-year report, a end of the year report. Uh, and through that process, we've discovered that there have been some people that we, we have uh, had to take a close look at and how the money was used and ended up having to uh, send them to uh, audit and inspections to make certain, uh, not that we're accusing anybody of doing anything wrong with the money, but 
through this process of oversight um, and budgeting, sometimes the, the numbers just don't make sense. And consequently, um, we uh, refer those to, to, the, uh, to, the, uh, um, to the Office of, of uh, Audit and Inspections. And uh, so there's a process for everything that we have to do, even in the recommendations that you're making, there's a process of trying to get everything in place. Uh, all these people, particularly the grantees, had to go through a workshop, had to understand the reporting process. So there's a bunch of stuff that has to happen between now and trying to solidify this. Uh, and so there's a, just a lot of stuff that has to happen. So. Uh, that's a part of the process of, of trying to make all of this stuff work. Um, not that we are opposed to anything that you're recommending, but it's just got to line up with what the responsibilities of the local development council is. And as the as Senator Patterson has suggested, uh, we have to stay inside of the law with what we're doing. So we have just a couple of people who have not had an opportunity to go through uh, what you're laying on the table for discussion. Uh, so what I'm going to do is recommend a special session where we can come back together after they have looked at and examined, and again, as you have suggested, take a look at the video, and uh, come, we'll come back together and make a decision as to which way we move, uh, whether we will uh, adopt your recommendations or go with what the county exec has sent to us. That's what's laying on the table for us. So that decision can be made by both and we will move from there. I'm not sure that that's the, the right mindset to have. I don't think our two options are to either adopt my recommendations or to adopt the county executives. Uh, what, what I would propose is that we would work together and look at all of our options to make sure that this money is spent the best way possible. Um, and so I'll reach out to you know, I, I heard you, Dr. Lattimore. I'll reach out to other members of the LDC uh, to, to really have more conversations about how do we work together to create a consensus document that serves um, that that serves the district and our, our region, uh, the, the six mile radius, as best possible. Uh, and of course, we have a team of lawyers here at the council. The county executive has a team of lawyers. Our office and budget, OMB department. Uh, everything that they do is run by a team of lawyers. And so I, I have no doubt that as we work together through this process, what we come up with will be legally sufficient. Okay, on, on the other side of that, uh, we have to make certain in these meetings behind the scenes that we don't violate the Public Meetings Act. Uh, that has to be considered in everything that we do. Um, and uh, as far as talking to um, any of us, it, it, it should come through this council as a whole and not uh, uh, individuals. All right, well, I have an eight o'clock uh, meeting, so I have to run, but thank you so much for your time. And I look forward to working with everybody. All right, sir, thank you. Um, so, uh, Senator, uh, uh, Senator Patterson, do you have any final things that you, you want to say to us? We'll just go around the table and um, and adjourn. Uh, open your mic, Senator Pass. Um, I, I got some misgivings about this, 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 this thing. Uh, I don't know what precipitated the need to make uh, the drastic changes. Um, I Can you speak up just a little louder. I said I I don't know what may have precipitated the need so quickly after his uh, being elected to to look at what what changes he would like to see on the level of development council. Seemed to me he needs to take care of some things at the county council level and, and let us do our job uh, as local. Uh, development council members, uh, uh, and uh, I, I just think we have, I want us to be very cautious with this process here, and that's why I just casually mentioned uh, maybe we need to chat with an attorney or have one at our disposal, um, because once you put something out there, 
it, 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 if it's not right, uh, uh, it, it, it can be damaging to the whole process. This is a good group. We brought it along a, a long way. I mean, uh, I, I, I think when something is good and working good, I don't know whether or not you really need to rush to make oh. Thank well, you. you know, we will, we will, of course, um, vote on what we think is is best. It's not necessary that we have to agree with what Councilman right. Barrow has put. Up. That's that's not what this is about. Um, I hope he understands that uh, we want to work with him. And but also, the county executive has to prove what they said. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, he said he has talked with her or spoke with her office and. Uh, um, and that's good. And, and of course, we, we have a responsibility as constituents in the community to make an assessment of what we think is best. Uh, and then we will um, kind of go from there. So because we didn't have a, a, um, a quorum in terms of people having read everything, uh, we will do a special meeting. After everybody has read, we will invite um, uh, council member uh, uh, back and and then we will vote and make our decision as we see uh, the importance of doing this so, you know i have some serious concerns myself uh, when it comes to particularly employer prince george's and the scholarship fund we have just exited an 8.6 percent inflation rate entered into 9.1 percent a 40-year high I'm 76 years old, and this is the fourth time I've seen this. This is the fourth time I've seen this. I was a real estate agent uh, when interest rates on mortgages were at 18%. We had to put bubble gum together to make deals work. We had to do wraparound mortgages. We had to be innovative. We had to do all kinds of things, buy downs and everything else to make mortgages work. And uh, we're hitting into that again. Don't be deceived by not one ounce because the Federal Reserve Board is continuing to raise their interest rates. And it's gonna have a devastating impact on middle income and low income providers. And it's very important that something like Employer Prince George's who trains and finds jobs for people stay in place. Absolutely. It's important that the scholarship fund given to students stay in place, particularly as it relates to parents that can't provide for them. So there are things that we have to really, really look at as to why this local development council exists. We are constituents. And, uh, you know, I want to work with council member Burroughs. I, I don't, I don't, I mean, this, this is an advantage to, to, to the, the entirety of district eight. However, our responsibilities for the six mile radius Going outside of that with some of the monies he's recommended and suggested, um, as uh, Senator Patterson said, not, not inside of the law. So we just have to uh, make certain that we stay inside of the law and make the best decision that we can come up as constituents in, in District 8 and as the local development council. Uh, uh, Dr. Lattimore. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. I have a habit of not knowing, not knowing my hand. I apologize. You have a habit of what? Not lowering my hand. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, but I'm I'm going around the table right oh, now. Oh no, I don't have anything. Okay, uh, Miss Brown. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. I just wanted to um, set for the record that um, I, at the county executive's office, is this is the first time I'm hearing about this, or um, and it just read through the the emails. And um, you, we have, we have been very um, diligent in honoring the separation of, you know, excuse the term, but church and state. The board has the authority to run, and uh, we have been um, very, we have worked together very well to adhere to the existing policies to um, ensure a transparent and ethical and, um, you know. Uh, complete and comprehensive process. And I think this board has done a tremendous job to do that. So, um, you know, as elections come and as people have ideas, this is great and everyone should have an opportunity to share with 
um, this board, what their ideas and thoughts are, but it is up to the board to have this discussion and make its recommendations. So um, I encourage you to do that. Um, I look forward to having further conversations on what this board decides is fruitful or is not. Um, but I just wanted to stay for that. I had not seen this at all. And um, since, you know, as a director of strategic partnerships and the grants come through my office, I just wanted to make clear for the record, I had not had any of this conversation with anyone. Okay. Uh, Delegate Turner. Uh, yes. You, you know, as I stated before earlier, okay, I want to absorb this uh, letter and absorb these changes. I mean, like I said, I have been there at the beginning and we have made great strides. I think this board here that we have here this time around is the best we've ever had. And let us continue to finish out the job that we have. And I am all for all your recommendations. That's all I have to say. Uh, Kevin. I appreciate it, Chairman. Um, so only that I have to say is that one of the things that Councilman Burroughs uh, said um, multiple times is obviously his piece was a, a conversation starter. So obviously this conversation has started. Um, so now it's our time, our our time to put our thoughts and put our information on that on a on a separate sheet, and su and submit and say, hey, here's our thoughts. Here's where we uh, want to be and where we need to go. Um, so he gave his thoughts. Now it's our time to give um, our thoughts, and then um, it's ultimately up to them to make that decision um, once we make the uh, once we vote. So I think we. I mean, it's great that he provided us his um, his thoughts. Now we're gonna provide our thoughts, and then. And we move forward from there. Um, so that's how I view it. Okay. All right, uh, Kimberly. Um, I, I think I echo what what most have said this evening. I'm um, hopeful that it's a you know a conversation starter. Um, I um, I think he was very specific to say that several times. So um, and he also seemed open to feedback and acknowledging that there are probably things that this this group this body is is more informed on than he is in certain capacities and um i'm looking forward to him leveraging our expertise based on our experience in, in this space and whatnot and what we know about um uh, some of the needs and 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 whatnot and sort of you know obviously working in collaboration with him and 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 um, moving to something that we agree on and and think is the, is right for for the council. So look forward to the special meeting um, where that can happen. Okay, Rashida. Um, I uh, agree with what Kevin said. My thoughts are pretty much aligned with that. Um, I was a bit, or I'm a bit um, unclear as to when or how the conversation part of this takes place. I mean, we do have um, total 45 days. So August 22nd is the date that the LDC has to submit our comments. So if we're having a special meeting, um, do we have time to engage in further conversation? Um, or, you know, as Councilman Burroughs came tonight, he did provide some insight as to his thoughts. Um, so that was helpful from my perspective. Um, but my recommendation is that, you know, after we all review this, if we have questions, clarification questions, that we would send those to him, but that we keep in mind the timeline here and that we as a council, um, LDC, we have to um, have time to put forth our, I'm going to use the term counter recommendation um, just for the sake of, you know, we receive something from the uh, county council and then we're going to respond um, to that with our um, recommendations. So that's the only thing that overall is that we keep in mind our time frames and we don't leave a large space for yeah. conversation. If um, I, I want to strike that word counter because I don't, I don't want us, and he was alluding to that, we don't want to get into a, a back and forth kind of thing. That doesn't make any sense at all. It doesn't get us anywhere. But we do have an opinion that we will Render. I'm sorry, I'm a labor, I'm a labor yeah, management no. person. <laughs> no problem, but we do have an opinion that we will render uh, based upon our expertise and our knowledge of what's going on in the community. 
um, I respect uh, his 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 ideas and uh, to talk to this. Ms. Brown said uh, her office hasn't heard anything from it, and this is the first time she's hearing it. But we do have a responsibility to render what we think, uh, and we will make that known in our next meeting. I don't know that we even have to hear from Mr. Burroughs again. I mean, he's made his, his, himself clear, and as Kevin has said, uh, we need to make a decision as to what we think and what we agree on. That's up to all of us, not just me as your your chair. And it's important that we move in that uh, fashion. Uh, Takesha? Yeah, I'm, I'm just sort of processing everything that was said and happened here tonight. But um, I think that agree that we have something to respond to um, at the very least. And um, I think to underscore Rashida's point, I think my next, my thoughts are going to 45 days, what are our next steps so that we have a chance to weigh in and then provide a cohesive sort of um, proposal back. Well, our next step is to take into consideration what the council members said um, and to uh, understand what he said up against what we know and understand about what we are trying to do and where we're headed as constituents. And having studied this for the last few years, all of us, uh, it's important that we understand, uh, as, as Senator Patterson has said, that we, we, we stay inside the guidelines and inside the law with this. It's very, very important that we do that. And if we do that the wrong way, this could really blow up on us. So that's that's very, very important. And maybe I'm just thinking, and like Rashida said, she's labor relations. I'm a project management person. So I'm looking for a timeline because I'm like, if it if it's not, if I'm not clear on what needs to happen at what stage and how I'm communicating with people, it's not going to happen. So I'm just trying to understand what that looks like. Well, is that why you didn't answer my call? <laughs> I, look, I'm on calls all day. So calls, just random calls don't get answered. So I'm sorry. I'm just joking. Uh, uh, Mr. Owens, uh, we normally uh, hold everything for last to hear from comments from our, our visitors and our public. It's important that we, uh, we hear from our public. Uh, we are constituents, you are a constituent. And it's important that we absorb uh, what you have to say and those kind of things. So we try to do that at the end of every meeting before we give uh, uh, Delegate Turner and, 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 and uh, Senator Patterson uh, the, the opportunity to adjourn uh, this meeting. So uh, the floor is on you, uh, sir. Well, I appreciate it, uh, uh, Pastor Robinson, Chairman Sir, and, and everyone there. Um, as you state, I, I am a visitor. Um, Miss Navy's uh, recommended I, I kind of listen in. I'm the president of Fort Washington Forward and, and a nonprofit in Fort Washington, and we, we've just kicked off of just kicked off our farmers market uh, um, test project. Uh, at Potomac Landing uh, a couple of weeks ago, and uh, we want to continue that. And we're doing a lot of things in, in the area. So uh, working with Parks and Recreation right now on uh, some beautification um, uh, in, in, uh, along Henson Creek Trail. We're trying to stay active in that because we believe that's a big part of the rejuvenation of the Livingston Road um, commercial district. So that's what we're about, uh, smart development, et cetera. But yeah, I mean, as a former military guy, I, I told Miss Navies uh, I would come tonight and and keep my mouth shut, keep my ears open, and um, really uh, wasn't a, a, a very aware of the LDC, so did a lot of research on that. And um, um, in terms of what was discussed tonight, that that's you don't need my commentary on that. That's not that's not for you to even care about. But certainly just listening to that and um, understanding what um, uh, people of influence are talking about in the area. And, and we consider your organization one of influence. So yeah, I mean, I just really honored to be here. Appreciate the time. We continue to do work in Fort Washington and, and, and it's always good to, to, to speak to people like yourselves who are, who are uh, people of influence as well. So we're within that circle. Uh, just trying to continue to do work. So, can you give us the hours of your farmers market? Uh, yeah, it's um, uh, it's nine to one at Potomac Landing um, Elementary. Uh, I can send some information to you if you want flyers and stuff like that. I don't have your emails, but what day? I'm sorry. What days or day? 
Um, it's the it's the second Saturday of July, August, September, October. This thing's blowing up already. So uh, next year it's going to be a lot a lot bigger. We've been contacted by uh, Potomac Village, which is where Planet Fitness is. They like to do a test there, uh, and we want to get up on Allentown Road as well to kind of um, kind of put a, a circle around what's being done uh, in, in the in the Fort Washington area. So. Um, yeah, I mean it's it's nine to one on sat on the second Saturdays. So the next one will be August thirteenth, um, and uh, yeah. So uh, and can you put your information in the chat box real quick? I sure can. I will go ahead and. Uh, My grandson is a part of your program. He attends Potomac uh, Landing. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. I mean, we we've had great. We originally were going to do it at um, Ten Talon Square. Uh, yeah. As I put in the email here, we were going to do it at 10 Talent Square where the auto zone is and all that stuff. I think there's a new Aldi coming there, but uh, we ran into some permitting issues, uh, not with us, but with with the um, with the 10 Talent Square. Uh, and so we moved it to Potomac uh, Landing. It's, it was well received. I mean, on a rainy Saturday, uh, we had three vendors sell out. And, and uh, so it, it's it's been really well received. And we're looking forward to growing that um and, and really bring a connectivity factor uh someone said earlier tonight I, I believe it was miss i don't know who it was that we don't have a whole lot going on in fort washington I, that's a paraphrase we're trying to change that uh Absolutely. with with Absolutely. programming and, and things of that nature so uh definitely i'll put my email uh it's president at fort washington voice it's, it's coming down in the chat here shortly love to hear from you well, we, we're excited. I got my grandson spying on you. He'll come back and tell me everything you need to tell me about what's going on. I won't give you his name. <laughs> well, there's my email, Pastor. And uh, I'm, a, I'm a former military guy, a Naval Academy guy. So, hey, I'm, I might be doing some research myself and finding out who he is. So we'll, we'll, we'll uh, <laughs> no, seriously, we, we um, uh, honored to be working in the community and, and, uh, this is just the beginning. So I think I put it in there correctly. Sometimes I spell del president wrong, but president at fwforward.org. So uh, feel free to reach out with any questions. I'd love to hear from you as we as we start this journey forward. Uh, there, Mr. And Owens. Yes, ma'am. Hi, this is Diana Leon Brown. I'm with the County Executive's Office. I heard you're from the um, Naval Academy. I just wanted to share that my um, middle son just graduated from Bishop McNamara is now attending the Naval Academy. He's in the uh, freshman class. So Let's, I uh, think five, so I'm optimistic. <laughs> yeah, and, and I don't want to take up time in your meeting. This is not what that's for, but if you send me an email there, you know, I'm, I'm a proud graduate and, and we stay connected. Um, uh, the African-American community stays connected. Uh, any any community. I, I shouldn't assume anything about you because I can't really see uh, the, the camera there, but we stay connected. Uh, we want to give back. So if there's ever any um, mentorship or just listening ear as someone who was there long I, ago. I would reach out to you off, off um, after this meeting, but thank you. Yeah, yeah. Well, all right. If I were in church standing in front of the podium, I would say, of all hearts and minds, I said, uh, do we have a motion to adjourn and a second? So moved. Wait a minute, man. You can't so move until the motion, man. Uh, motion uh, to adjourn. Well, Y'all just trying to take <laughs> over the Turner and and <laughs> Obi Patterson, uh, Senator Patterson's role. Okay. okay uh, Senator Patterson, just remember that you know, <laughs> we have a, we have a motion and a second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. And we want to thank uh, Miss Nicole for her administrative role. She keeps us all together, and uh, we thank you, Nicole. Thank you, Ryan. Uh, Miss Brown, it's always a pleasure to have you. I see you out there, boy. You'd be doing it on Facebook, right? I, I, I see. <laughs> I'm so well, glad the campaigning is over. At least for now, I can actually catch up with some of my work. But you know, we gotta we gotta represent. <laughs> yes, indeed. Have fun. Yes. All and right, thank God you to the board for your service. Bye bye. We, say it again. I'm sorry. No, I was just thanking you and your board for your great service and to have a good evening.
All right, everybody have a good evening. We will uh, reach out and let you guys know when we will have our meeting and our vote as to uh, what we've heard. And then we can move from there to start to work with uh, um, our, our Congress member to, uh, to try to get some things done together. That's the secret to our success. Have a good evening. All right, good night, everyone. Be safe. Thank you. Good night, everyone.